So we went ahead and bought the cheapest cordless airbrush that we could find on Amazon. This exact one comes in at $59.99 and we wanted to just have a little bit of an experiment and see who is this potentially for? Who does this benefit? Could somebody just looking to enter the world of custom sneakers potentially use something like this? So we're gonna go ahead, open this thing up. I'm gonna give you my first impressions on how I feel about it, how I feel about the build quality, how it just feels, how loud it is, what I think about it, and then I wanna go ahead and experiment with this over the next couple weeks, try and test it out on a couple projects, see how it actually holds up, and then give you guys my sort of end of the line thoughts on what I think about it. All right, so on the inside, very simple. We have our USB charging cable, our airbrush, our little wrench in order probably to tighten some of the pieces up. And then right here, this is where the magic happens. This would be the cordless mini little compactable carry-on compressor, whatever you want to call it. Really excited to go ahead, put this thing together and see how it works. Okay, so straight out of the box, initial feel, typical gravity feed airbrush. Feels and looks just like a lot of the other ones that I've used in the past. I think that just getting used to actually having this underneath and holding it and where to sort of wrap your hands and that ergonomics around this would take a little bit of getting used to. All right, now let's go ahead, turn it on. Okay, not too loud, not too bad, nothing crazy. Definitely a lot quieter than a regular compressor. It does have a continuous airflow coming directly out. Nothing is loose. I haven't really uh, loosened anything up, so I'm not sure if there is a way to kick that off to not have it spewing out air, but that's not bad as long as it's not spraying out any of the paint or water inside as soon as you turn it on. We'll go ahead and run some cleaner through here. Okay, so none of the water's coming out right now. Let's see how that flow is. Okay, so. Not a super strong flow. A great way, of course, to test any airbrush is you always wanna make sure that you're spraying water or cleaner out before it's spraying paint. And you wanna make sure that that's spraying really well because if you're not spraying water or cleaner, you're definitely not gonna be able to spray any paint through there. So according to the manual and some of the reviews, it looks like you get somewhere around 30 minutes to an hour of runtime before you need to charge the compressor again. And then it takes somewhere around one to two hours to get a full charge and use it. So not too bad, depending on, of course, the project that you're trying to work on. Other than that, the only other little thing to mention is there is this little adjustment screw here at the back. And what this is supposed to control is the amount of paint flow that's coming out of your airbrush. I went ahead and tested it with some cleaner and even at the loosest setting, compared to the tightest setting. It really didn't make that much of a difference when it came to the actual paint flow. But now I'm ready to go ahead, throw some paint in here and see how it holds up to actually paint on some shoes. So for my performance test, really the ultimate goal was just to see what it was like trying to lay down a gradient on this pair of shoes, along with doing some of our simple techniques like our middle bar technique, refading in the colors over on top of that middle bar, and then testing out some stencils on top of it just to see how it all goes together. And some of my initial observations were that the paint flow was definitely, definitely less strong than I'm used to with my typical setup and I actually made sure to thin out my paint even further than usual because I was definitely worried about this airbrush being able to handle the typical airbrush paint that I'm using. So it seemingly just gave me a lot of trouble with trying to get a perfectly steady paint flow. The paint was definitely coming out incredibly slow, no matter how far I was pulling down on the trigger, no matter how much pressure I was trying to apply, I wasn't able to get that nice steady flow to really end up with some clean, even coverage. After laying down the teal when I was ready to move into the black color, I decided to thin that out even further to see if that would help but it really didn't help that much more. And I do think that ultimately you could end up at a point where you do add too much too thin to where you are going to hurt the integrity of the paint. So you don't wanna just continue to add that in to sort of solve this problem. After both of my colors were laid down and I was ready to move into our middle bar technique, I was able to mix the colors together in the airbrush. Of course, that's a given that you're able to do the backflow technique, mix the colors together and have a nice clean ratio to where I could then do this middle bar and try to fade the colors on top of this. But it was really, Really hard to again just have a steady paint flow and lay down a clean middle bar. Once I added the original colors back into the gun and was ready to fade those on top of the middle bar, ultimately because so little paint was coming out, it did make the job of doing the fade not too bad. I do think that ultimately I was able to lay down a somewhat okay fade even though I didn't have that steady of a paint flow. 
The next test that I wanted to try was just to see how this airbrush would work with spraying through some stencils. I went ahead and threw some gold into the airbrush and was gonna do a cheetah print on top of this colorway. And ultimately, I don't think that part of it worked out too bad because when you're spraying through stencils, you really don't need a lot of pressure to make the effects still work. And here's how those stencils on top of our gradient turned out. Now, after doing that gradient with today's airbrush, I couldn't help but wonder how much easier it would feel when switching to my typical setup using the Badger Patriot 105. So I'm just gonna show what that looked like doing that same style of gradient on the other side of the shoe. And the difference absolutely was night and day. I would say that the cordless airbrush probably took me 10 times longer than I would typically spend on a very simple gradient like this. And just for comparison's sake, I thought that it would be cool to show our cordless airbrush versus my typical Badger Patriot 105 set at around 30 PSI and just show a quick comparison at how they both are at just spraying out airbrush cleaner. And there's obviously a huge difference in how steady that flow is for both of them. All right, so would I recommend this? I think that ultimately it's a little hard for me to recommend it, sort of at that $50 price point, knowing where you can get to if you're willing to spend maybe another 100 or so. If we take a look at the Badger Patriot 105 and the Harbor Freight Compressor, you might be spending somewhere around 150 to 175 so you know this is a $50 piece so it's not like it costs 500 or a thousand dollars to really get going airbrushing you can really get moving on a serious level at maybe 150 to 200 so at $50 I think ultimately you might just end up with a little bit more headaches and you know kind of who is this airbrush for I think that this might be for somebody who's potentially just starting out looking to save as much money as possible really wants to potentially dive into a lot of the aspects of customizing but there's so much to it that maybe they're a little overwhelmed and they say okay maybe I could just spend $50 here, get going with that airbrush, see if I really like it. Maybe I'm a little afraid of buying a ventilation system, you know, an airbrush booth. Maybe I'm afraid of the noise of a compressor. I don't want to disturb other people in my household. And so for anybody just starting out, I can totally see why you might justify a purchase like this. But ultimately, I think that it is something that could just lead to kind of ending up on the shelves where it just gives you a lot of headaches because you can't do what you're trying to do because maybe it's not the best tool for the job. So if by chance you are still interested in checking out this airbrush get up for yourself, we will have that link down below. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Please be sure to go ahead, leave a like if you haven't already. Make sure you're subscribed and everybody get out there and just create.